yes, yes, the Philadelphia Eagles have won another football game. And yes, we are here to talk about it. We have some big takeaways. We have Jimmy Kemsky, who's going to be joining us from Philly Voice. So we have a lot of things to what went right, what went right, and what went right. I mean, my goodness, good luck trying to find a good, bad, or uh, a bad or an ugly in this event. But look, it was a gigantic victory for the Philadelphia Eagles on multiple levels, beating a quality football team, beating a defensive-minded football team. A.J. Brown, the revenge narrative that fueled it, at least it was a good storyline, if not actual events on the field. So a lot to take away. And always, you know, maybe just maybe there is something that's not negative, that's not bad, but just that's lingering. So let us bring and Jimmy, as always, we appreciate it, man. I know this is a crazy year, a busy year and another victory for the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's start with not biggest takeaway, but maybe biggest surprise overall about the nature in which the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Titans. Um, I don't know that anything was really surprising. Uh, I guess I'm a little surprised by how easy it looked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, this Titans team was, you know, kind of billed right and rightfully so as a very kind of tough, grimy, physical team. And certainly the Eagles can be described as that too. That's one of many different ways that they can play. And in my opinion, they kind of out bullied the bullies uh, in that game. So I think maybe if we're talking just from a sur- surprise perspective, uh, maybe a little bit of a surprise of just how thoroughly they dominated that team on both sides of the ball in the trenches. Yeah, I- I'm with you, man. I-, I think for me, the just clear abortion of the run game, right? Like they just, they just dis, and, and it was a guy who, you could you could justify sticking with longer than most, if any, running backs in the NFL, no matter the scenario. And it wasn't just the limited amount of yards. Maybe more impressive was that the offense lapped the Titans so much, Jimmy, that Derrick Henry couldn't even touch the ball, let alone do something with it when he touched it. Yeah, they got a big lead uh, quickly and or not a big lead, but they got a lead quickly and built on that lead as the game progressed and that is not, not very conducive to, you know, running the ball a lot, obviously. So sure. yeah, they didn't get to get their running game going. And when they did try to run it, there was nothing there. I think he had what, like 11 carries for uh, 30 yards. I think I know he was under three yards per carry on the game. That was awful. And awful. Uh, he's had actually Derek Henry's actually shown a, there's some signs of slowing down right? Uh, as this season has progressed. They've had a lot of, offensive line injuries um they don't have you know really any threats in the passing game so teams are able to key in on that running game and uh, all that has affected uh derrick henry and the the titans offense this season so yeah i mean that wasn't a a big surprise that they were able to shut him down but it was you know somewhat surprising that they were that they only ran the ball with him 11 times right because they still stick with it anyway um even you know when it's not necessarily working they're not a they, like that team has punted a ton this season, and they wound up punting in that game uh, seven times. The Eagles didn't turn them over at all, yep. uh, but they forced seven. They forced seven punts. So, uh, yeah, very dominating performance by the defense for sure. In addition to you know the obvious uh, explosive plays that they had offensively. So I've been working this theory here this year with the Eagles because I think they fit the bill and I, I want to bounce it off you because a you are as close to this team covering it as anybody and B you know me well enough to call me on my bullshit especially when it's bullshit but I think there's something here right and I think against the Titans was a perfect encapsulation of what's happened with the Chiefs so much leading up to the season which is you can run all over spags but teams don't do it for multiple reasons like They get down and they look over and they think, okay, my goodness, we have to match the firepower that Patrick Mahomes brings. And I think Jalen Hurts, and he showed over the last two weeks, Jimmy, that he can do it in multiple ways. This offense is clearly as dynamic as it gets in the NFL. But I I think what we saw with the offense, with the Titans, especially with a guy like Derrick Henry, is, is going to be more the norm unless they go up against a really savvy coach or, or just circumstantial where, where they don't have to leave the run game 
and think, oh, my God, we have to match and keep up with this amazing firepower of Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I think there's something to that. Like, it's certainly a lot easier to be a defensive coordinator when you have an MVP candidate on the other side of the ball at quarterback. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's something to that for sure. I'll also note, too, by the way, that I actually just took a look at the um, – the top rushers in the league this year. And of the top 13 uh, rushers on the league this year, the Eagles have already faced or will face 10 of them. Yeah. And one of them is of course, Miles Sanders. So they see him in practice every day along with Jalen hurts. One of them they saw in uh, joint practices during training camp in Nick Chubb. So there's really only one running back of that, of the top 13 rushers in the league that they won't have seen any of. That's Josh Jacobs of the uh, Raiders. So, yeah, all the quibbling about, you know, the Eagles' run defense throughout the season is certainly justified in, after some games. But they've also faced uh, the best running backs in the league all season long. So, like, that has something to do with it, too. And, uh, yeah, I like the way that, uh, that the defense is looking heading down the stretch here and into the playoffs. What's the biggest thing that you look at with this offense that you think is just not going to like the league is just not going to catch up to this year. And and it might just be a simple answer, which is two words, Jalen hurts, Jimmy, but we, we see this with newer teams, a uh, newer dynamic. I mean, even Mike Vrabel of all people in that Titans team caught up to the dynamic Lamar Jackson, that MVP year. I definitely think Jalen is throwing the football at a better clip than Lamar was that year, but what do you think, and, and maybe there is something specific that you've seen week in and week out, that this the league, especially on defense, is just not going to catch up to the Eagles this year? Yeah, it's going to be tough because the Eagles can – they're so versatile. They can win in so many different ways, particularly on offense. Um, you mentioned Jalen Hurts, obviously, is the engine that drives all of it with his ability to make plays with his legs. And now he's also become one of the best passers in the NFL. He's certainly one of the most efficient passers this season. You know, 20 touchdown passes, three interceptions. Only one of those interceptions was definitively his fault on this season, which is pretty crazy. And, you know, he's, he's done a good job of also holding on to the ball from a fumble perspective, yep. which is something um, we haven't been used to seeing under Carson Wentz here for so many years. Um but, yeah, because they're so versatile and they can win in so many different ways, whether it be grinding out with the run game, um, you know, doing what they did to the Titans on Sunday, which was similar to what they did to the Vikings uh, week two, they're really hard to defend because you got that quarterback who can do everything. And then also the other, the other aspect of that, too, is I think the offensive line is also very versatile. There are you know, offensive lines that are really good run-blocking offensive lines that maybe – aren't as good in pass protection and there are some that are good in pass protection, but maybe can't, you know, move bodies uh, and, and create big plays in the run game. Well, the Eagles offensive line can do both. So, you know, that only yeah. adds to the, uh, the, the idea that they can be, you know, so dynamic and so versatile uh, both with Jalen Hurts who can do everything and with the offensive line that can also uh, do everything. So you mentioned, Carson Wentz and the difference, of course, of holding on to the football. And, and I don't want to go down history by any means, but it is the easiest backdrop to focus on what's happening now with Jalen Hurts. And I just wrote about this today on site. We have your Eagles and Giants five matchups to watch as well posted here for everybody to see as we do this. So we'll talk about that real quick on the way out, Jimmy, for you. But looking at Jalen Hurts, Bryce Harper, Right, what happened with Trey Turner and AJ Brown? And I know that there are other dynamics, money, and you have to have room and things along those lines. But it, it's hard for me to think that Jalen Hurts, if all things are equal, if a player is able to get out of a situation that they're not happy with, especially on offense, doesn't look at a Jalen Hurts and be everything else here and says to themselves, I, I want to play with and I want to play for that guy. And it is not a slam or a knock or even trying to open up a door back with Carson Wentz, but it feels like a complete textbook definition of a 180 degree turn from internal turmoil to external desire to play with a guy. Yeah, I think uh, players are, I think there's something to that players around the league can, can see what the Eagles have done this year, uh, both offensively and defensively. 
And um, yeah, it, it would certainly seem they'd certainly seem to be an appealing landing spot for a player that's looking to compete for a Super Bowl. I mean, we saw already this year they traded or not traded. They they signed Linval Joseph and Indomitian and Sue. Uh, to in, who are free agents just on the street waiting to sign up with a contender. And Sue, even I think just a day or two ago, said he made the right choice by coming to the Eagles uh, as opposed to other teams that, that had interest in him. So, yeah, there's something to that for sure. And not only the quarterback, but I think the Eagles have gotten a reputation. I mean, even as far back as when Doug Peterson was the coach too. But, you know, Doug Peterson and Nick Sirianni are both – Players, coaches, yep. I would, I'll put it. Um, yep. you know, players enjoy playing for them, particularly veterans who the Eagles had a, I don't know, it certainly wasn't a soft training camp, but it was a training camp where they didn't have long practices. They didn't uh, do a ton of, I mean, they didn't do any tackling to the ground at all. Their thud periods were limited. And they give their veterans, I don't, I don't want to say a day off, but Basically, they're limited in practices. They have a walkthrough at the end of the year, pretty much on Wednesday, uh, every you know every week of the year. At the end of the year, uh, that that began you know about a month or two ago with this team. So you know, players appreciate those kind of little perks along the way because you know their bodies go through a lot during the course of the season. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, you know players like Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson and Fletcher Cox and all the guys that have been here for a long time really appreciate. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of the ways that uh, that, that Nick Sirianni and, and, and his staff go about trying to keep them fresh. That's a good point, too, especially focusing on because it's not just the, the good veterans. It, it's guys that are OK, that can still help your team. It's guys that can hang around. It's guys that uh, can make up from a leadership standpoint. Last one for you, Jimmy. We have it up here for everybody to see. Eagles at Giants, five matchups to watch. We'll let everybody go, click, and read through that for your five. I'm curious, give us one that made the cutting floor that didn't quite make the five, Matt. Or maybe you were just, you know, scraping to find five with this crazy Giants team. That's fair, too. So you could give us the fifth one, or you could give us one on the cutting floor. I'll give you the uh, the cutting floor one. So, uh, you know, I mentioned in the the article that the Giants are really depleted. At uh, you know, within in their secondary, they are missing a Dory Jackson. He he may come back and play this week, for all I know, uh, but he did not. He has not played the last I think two or three weeks, so we'll see if he's a go. They also have um, uh, their other starting cornerback at least week one. Uh, Aaron Robinson was done for the year early this year, mm-hmm. so they they're missing Xavier McKinney at safety. So logic would say the Eagles are going to throw it all over the yard like they did against the Titans, but they also have some injuries on their defensive line. And uh, they've had to have their, their their best player is Dexter Lawrence on defense. And he's got six sacks, um, you know, like 20 QB hits this year. Big numbers for uh, a big defensive tackle like him, who's also good at shutting down the run. He had to play 70-something snaps uh, last week in that overtime game against the Commanders. That guy is not going to be fresh heading into this game. So I wonder if the Eagles will try to you know, try to wear him out uh, early in this game and uh, get into their reserves, which it's not a very, it's, it's not a very deep group uh, along their defensive line. They have some good players, some good starters on that defensive line, but it's not a very deep group. So, you know, I think, um, you know, while logic would say that they're going to throw it all over the yard, I also do think that they're going to seek to, you know, kind of wear on that defensive line early in this game uh, as well and see if like, you know, they can make, life easier on themselves in the second half at Jimmy Kemsky with an eye again we all the posts up there that you've seen including the five matchups to watch we have them up there it's all on Philly voice thank you sir yeah you got it Ethan. all right appreciate it as always from Jimmy get some insight about what's going on here across the board now let's look at this because we we touched on a lot with Jimmy and I think for me these are going to be rapid fire takeaways Biggest takeaway is it was a complete football game. Just a complete, all around, all three areas, a complete football game. Can't say anything else about that. Number one, biggest takeaway. Two, Jalen Hurts right now is so dynamic. The biggest number across the board was the limited amount of carries 
for Derrick Henry. That was it. More so than anything else was the limited amount of touches on the ground for Derrick Henry. That was due to Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is so dynamic that the Philadelphia Eagles offense was able to score at a clip and put the ball in the air at such with such ease that the most dynamic runner outside of a quarterback, you could argue, and Jalen, Derrick Henry, who to Jimmy Kemsky's point has slowed down this year, was taken out of the game, effectively out of the game. And I want you to understand, this is not a typical running back. This is a running back that can break an 80-yard play at any given moment. It doesn't matter how many times they've run that play for one to two yards. He can break that same play at any point of the game. And Jalen Hurts completely neutered that option. That's insane. I, you cannot overstate how difficult it is to beat a team that's able to do that. And then last, but certainly not least, Nick Sirianni's got something here. Nick Sirianni is definitely connecting and continuing to connect with these guys on a level that we haven't seen before. Not to knock. And look, you'd have to talk to Brian Westbrook. Well, maybe we'll pull some of these Andy Reid guys out and talk to them next week because they loved Andy. They would die for Andy. And Nick Sirianni, man, it's more than Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson won a Super Bowl here and all that, but uh, something's going on here. Something special is going on here with Doug Peterson and, or Doug Peterson, Nick Sirianni, that has been mirrored by Doug Peterson and Andy Reid and to half of a team, Buddy Ryan. But the reality is, is that this is something that's connecting with his players, not the fan base, his players. And uh, we are just so lucky to have another coach like that. I don't know how this thing ends, but I know what's going on right now. And it is just insane. All right, Eagles, Giants, look. I'm going to tell you about this from a betting standpoint and only from a betting standpoint. Take the Giants plus seven and a half or higher. Other than that, the Giants are a really difficult team to figure out. On paper, they don't make sense. They shouldn't be this good as far as like winning games. Yet here they are. They're winning games and they're they're surviving at the very least. I, I don't know what to tell you here. The Eagles should win this game and win this game comfortably. But... Let's see what happens with Saquon Barkley. Let's see what happens with Daniel Jones, two guys who will move the football with their feet. It's hard to think that they lose this game. I just would take the seven, seven and a half points. That's all. That's all. I'm at Shander Show. We'll see you next week.